Our senior reporter, Catherine Norris Trent, is standing by in Mariupol right now, so we'll cross to her for more. Catherine, how have people there reacted to Vladimir Putin's clarification of what he considers to be the borders on Tuesday? Good morning, Erin. Um, on, the, on Tuesday night, on the streets of Mariupol, there was a demonstration, uh, quite a sizable crowd, a few hundred people at its height, perhaps, uh, demonstrating against Vladimir Putin's pronouncements and expressing their anger and fear at what that could mean for them here in this city of Mariupol. Because Vladimir Putin last night said he uh, recognized the expanded uh, borders of the Donbass, as he considers it, uh, which would not only include include the 30% uh, so far of uh, the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts that the Russian-backed separatists currently occupy, but much further afield, including here in this city, which is about 20 kilometers from the front line. So this means that if Vladimir Putin follows through on that uh, pronouncement with military action, he could soon be sending troops into this city, perhaps by land or perhaps by sea. It's a really key port city situated right on the coastline, as you can see behind me. Now, people I was speaking to last night saying that they felt resigned to this, they felt it was an inevitable inevitability that they saw coming. Some of them saying they're going to stay and fight to defend their city. Others telling me they're not going to leave because they have nowhere else to go. But people have been making contingency plans and thinking about what this full-scale war with Russia, the prospect of it, could mean for them and their lives. We have to understand that Mariupol has been living with the, the threat of invasion or attack since 2014. And in 2015, there were deadly missile attacks on the east of this city. So this kind of tension and this kind of threat of invasion is something people know quite well. I'd also like to point out that here in Mariupol, there are, um, it's difficult to have an exact percentage, but there are people who are pro-Russian. We are close to Russia here. Uh, most of this city is Russian speaking, although that by no means means that they are pro-Russian. But I spoke to one lady, for example, yesterday who said that she would welcome the arrival of Russian troops here, saying she thought it would stabilize the region and stop the shelling that has peaked again around the Donbass and, and near to this city. And uh, Catherine, you mentioned that Mariupol is a key city. Can you expand a little bit upon its strategic importance to Ukraine? Absolutely. You can probably see behind me there's a big uh, commercial port. There are lots of industrial sites here as well. There are vast steelworks in and around the city of Mariupol, which make up a, a non-negligible part of Ukraine's GDP as a whole, around about 5 or 6%. So losing them uh, would be a big blow economically as well as on the political front. Um, this is a region which is, uh, this is a city, excuse me, which is just on the Sea of Azov there, which is a, a trading route where ships come in that there's a very busy commercial port here, which activity has been slowed down recently because of the tensions and the naval exercises being carried out in this sea. Uh, it's also uh, on the, the coast which would lead the Donbass, the Russian-backed occupied territory in the Donbass, uh, linking it to Crimea, which, of course, Russia annexed in 2014. So it is in many ways strategic. It's a city of around half a million people, one of the biggest cities uh, in Ukraine, I think the 10th largest city, and so really is a, a key target here. And all eyes are on Mariupol for, for all these reasons. All right, Catherine Norris-Trent, thank you very much for that update out of Mariupol.